as always, our class have to go on. Yeah, and especially for this topic, uh, this is quite uh, important as you will need proper proper explanation. Yeah, uh, for the slides. Um, if this were a much simpler subject, maybe I I may not have to do this. Yeah, but our topic today is a cross cultural communication and negotiation. I hope you can see the the mouse here. Yeah, our main text uh, for this topic is a uh, Luton's book uh, from the topic cross cultural communication and negotiation. During the first few weeks. You did an assignment on cultural miscommunication. Yeah, uh, think back about the assignment. Yeah, and reflect back. Yeah, on these questions. Yeah, why do you think that person is outside of your culture? Yeah, and what was the conversation about? Yeah, was it challenging? Yeah, and if it was challenging, then why? If it was not challenging, then why? Much of it is uh, important, yeah, because you will face, yeah, after a few years, maybe next year, maybe uh, in a few months, you will graduate, you will go to the workforce, yeah, most likely that you will communicate with uh, somebody outside of your home culture, yeah, that can be a bit uncomfortable, yeah, it can be quite challenging. Yeah, sometimes uh, that person outside from your culture can be your boss, can be your worker, can also be somebody that potentially become your business partner. So a lot of stakes there. I open the the topic with an opening case, yeah, H&M and Bangladesh. As we all know, Bangladesh is one of the main countries for clothing production. Yeah, uh, there's, there was one time the production was so heavy, yeah. But uh, this discussion has come up in a lot of topics already. Yeah, the facilities are not so well maintained. The buildings are not so not so good. Yeah. So what happened was the building collapsed. Yeah, it brought down a number of workers. Also, yeah, because it all ties down to brands like uh, H and M, yeah, uh, Gap, and so on. Uh, some brands feel that they must take responsibility of what happened to these workers. So what they did was H uh, and M, yeah, uh, they started uh, an action uh, which. They tried to sign up an agreement yeah, yeah, to commit yeah, to inspect the garment factories of the suppliers. Yeah, H&M, as you all know, is a European brand. Yeah, uh, and not just European brands are uh, doing their businesses there, doing their production there. A lot of American brands as well. Uh, at that point of time, European brands are in agreement yeah, for that to be signed, but American brands are not so happy to sign uh, that agreement. Yeah, but uh, after a few rounds of negotiation, these American brands, yeah, including Walmart, Gap, and so on, they agree to sign that agreement. Yeah, so to have to protect the workers of their factories you can read this more yeah uh, this is an interesting case on negotiation you can read this more uh, on the internet a lot of resources on it but here we want to define the term communication examine examples of verbal communication styles also explain the importance of message interpretation. We will also discuss common downward and upward communication flows, the role of language, perception and culture. 
Now also, we will discuss the steps to overcome international communication problems, develop approaches to international negotiations, yeah, and review behaviors in negotiation. Communication is the process of transferring meanings from the sender to the receiver. Yeah, on the surface, uh, this appears to be straightforward. We have discussed about communication model last week. Yeah, but within the context of international communication, yeah, a lot of problems uh, can result yeah, if the meanings are transferred, uh, if it's failed to be transferred. Yeah. In uh, the Malay culture, we call this, it's like uh, dogs talking to cats. Yeah? People from very different worlds. Yeah? Some verbal communication styles. We have discussed about context. In communication, we always talk about context, yeah? which is the information that surrounds a communication. It also helps convey the message. Yeah. It plays a key role in explaining many uh, differences in communication. Uh, if we talk about context in culture, yeah, we talk about high context and low context societies. Usually, in high context societies, for instance in Japan and many Middle East countries, messages are often coded and implicit. Using a lot of symbols, yeah, a lot of uh, meanings, colors, and so on. But in low context societies, messages are often explicit. The speaker will say precisely what they mean. Remember the logical uh, progression of different societies? It plays a heavy role in context. Yeah. Uh, in your current lecture notes, you are given this. Yeah, but last week we have discussed this. Uh, it's similar. Yeah, for consistency reason, I use this. Uh, a lot of countries uh, for you to remember. Again, you don't have to memorize. Yeah, just think about Western culture and also Eastern culture. Usually, Western culture, for instance, US. Yeah, it's low context. High context culture, yeah, uh, for instance, Eastern countries usually are high context. Okay. We will discuss uh, some uh, verbal styles. Indirect, yeah, direct, succinct or elaborate, contextual or uh, personal, effective or instrumental. This is the summary of the items that we will discuss in the next few slides. Indirect and direct styles, yeah, it is highly related to high and low context cultures. Yeah, uh, high context cultures, usually their messages are implicit and indirect. There are a lot of information from the voice intonation timing, facial expression, and so on. They play important roles in conveying your information. In low context cultures, people often need only to accomplish objectives. They tend to be direct yeah, and focused in communications. Yeah. You go back and think about, for instance, graduation ceremonies. Yeah. Uh, Eastern graduation ceremonies usually have a lot of uh, dance, maybe a lot of speech, a lot of culture-based uh, symbols. And usually a gradu graduation ceremony will take longer than Western graduation ceremonies. i give you an example. Yeah, this is uh, a quotation from a Finnish entrepreneur in Hong Kong. This entrepreneur is from Finland. Yeah. In Hong Kong, the partners and employees, they listen to you. They listen to you very carefully. 
and they pretend to agree with you, but that means nothing. This is according to that Finnish entrepreneur. But for the Hong Kong partners employees, their silence can mean so many things. Yeah. For low context uh, cultures, you know, whatever that they say is what they mean. But for high context cultures, whatever that they communicate, yeah, is everything. Yeah, the vocab, the choice, the phrasing, and so on. Okay, communication styles can also be uh, elaborate. Or succinct, yeah. elaborating style, yeah, usually are most popular in high context cultures, with moderate degree of uncertainty avoidance. Exacting, uh, exacting style, they focus on precision. They use the right amount of words. Uh, usually more common in low context, low uncertainty avoidance culture. Succinct style. They are more common in high context culture with uh, considerable uncertainty avoidance. People say few words, now they allow understatement, pauses, and silence. I know a lot of words here, yeah, but elaborate to succinct styles are highly related with context and also the level of uncertainty avoidance. If you can still remember, uncertainty avoidance is the degree of comfort. Yeah, of a society with um, something that is uncertain. Yeah. For instance, here, elaborating style, usually popular in high context culture, moderate degree of uncertainty avoidance. Malaysia is one of the countries that fit into the criteria. Quite high context, yeah, moderate degree of uncertainty avoidance. So, uh, using a lot of pictures, a lot of words, exciting style, they focus on position. The right amount of words to convey message. Usually common in low context, low uncertainty avoidance culture. Here, the exciting style, uh, the, the example I'm giving here is Ireland. Succinct style more common in high context culture and considerable uncertainty avoidance. Yeah, people say few words and allow under statements and so on. Yeah. The country that fit into that criteria is Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. As always, I like to use uh, advertisements. If you look, uh, I choose similar companies, similar products. Domino's Pizza in Malaysia. A lot of pictures here and a lot of words here. Yeah, this is the Minus Pizza example in Ireland. The advertisement considerable amount of words, yeah, sufficient amount of graphic. Yeah, success time for Akin or Saudi Arabia. Some words a bit more than uh, Ireland. Uh, some some pictures also. Next, we have contextual and personal styles. Cont contextual style, it focus on the speaker and also relationship. Usually, they are associated with high power distance, collective and high context cultures. Again, a lot of words here, but it's more common in Eastern societies, Asia and so on. It is shown in usage of words reflecting hierarchy. Personal style it focus on the speaker, yeah, and reduction of barriers between parties. Uh, it is more popular in Western cultures, and it is shown in using first name basis. For instance, if you see your boss, yeah, if you are from the Eastern culture, you will say something that reflect their. Yeah, Okay, usually, usually is it shown in first name basis. Okay, I'm sorry guys if uh, the audio is uh, not so... Uh, I would say it's not clear. 
it's just a, a lot of noise yeah but not the kind of noise that hopefully uh, will uh, hopefully will influence your understanding yeah Uh, another category of style is affective and instrumental. Yeah, affective style. Yeah, it is characterized by language requiring the listener to note what is said and to observe how the message is presented. Yeah, based on this statement alone, you will know that this is common in high context culture. Instrumental style is more goal oriented. It focuses on the sender to clearly let the other know what they want to know. This is most, uh, most commonly found in individualistic, low context cultures. I give you an example yeah, the speech by presidents on the coronavirus outbreak. Yeah. The first bubble. The achievement so far has been made possible all due to the power of our people yeah? who have put complete trust in and provided support for quarantine authorities and medical staff. I extend my respect and gratitude yeah, to our proud people. Next level, we are at a critical time. We need a life-saving move with early action on. China. We must take action. We must take the same action with Europe. We will not delay. Now, in your opinion, which of the bubble belongs to which? Yeah. We can put that uh, in the... I will turn this into uh, a discussion in uh, UKM for you. Next is interpretation of communication. Effectiveness of communication in international contexts yeah, usually is determined by how closely the sender and the receiver have the same meaning for the same message. Okay, consider these uh, two comments. Uh, these are comments on K KLCC Park. Yeah, uh, maybe you've been there. Okay. Zainul is from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. According to him, the KLCC park is tranquility in the midst of concrete jungle, best place for relaxing, and so on. IRHS, on the other hand, from Rochester, not sure where that is, uh, I suspect it's um, maybe from the UK or US, yeah, maybe I have to look into this further. It is a nice park with great view of the tower. Now you can see. Yeah. Which one is high context, which one is uh, low context, which one is effective, which one is instrumental. Yeah. Next discussion is on communication flows. There are two ways, down and up. I intentionally chose this picture uh, because in communication, especially in written communication, yeah, if you are missing uh, one letter, it can mean a whole different meaning in yeah, the sentence. Okay. We have downward, downward communication, which is the transmission of information from manager to the support limit. Yeah. The purpose is yeah, to convey orders or information. Usually managers, they use this channel for instructions and performance feedback. Yeah, and this channel will facilitate the flow of information. What makes it complicated is when you are talking with non-native speakers. Yeah, and it is more complicated even if you are, let's say, you need to, uh, let's say English is your second language and you need to talk uh, to your staff who is not fluent in English as well. Yeah, so what you do, you use most common words yeah, with the most common meanings. Do not use slang. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can read this on your own. Yeah, I choose some. 
avoid use esoteric or culturally biased words. Some words are more uh, within the context of that culture. Then, do not use expressions requiring the listener to form mental images. Uh, all of these, what they are trying to say is be direct. Direct information uh, is better. Word communication, on the other hand, yeah, is the transfer of meaning from subordinate to the superior, from the worker to the boss. Yeah, the purpose is to provide quick feedback, yeah, ask questions, and obtain assistance. In real life context, yeah, you can uh, you can see this in a lot of organization chat. Yeah, but uh, if, even if they do not display their communication, uh, their organization chart, you can see, you can uh, imagine the workflow. In the US, everybody thinks they have communication directly to the top. It goes down to the low power distance, yeah, low context, yeah, and, and also low uncertainty avoidance. China. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, levels of bureaucracy. Again, not all, maybe, maybe some of them are. Yeah? All information will flow through channels. This goes uh, to the explanation of uh, China is a high context, uh, high power distance, high uncertainty avoidance culture. Yeah? But it also depends on the organization itself. United Nations is an organization that treats all nations the same. Yeah? So, their communication style is more about equality. Next is communication barriers. Yeah? In your workplace, knowledge of the language used at headquarters is not enough. The fluency, technical knowledge and writing skills are also important. Yeah? There are several cultural barriers in language, including cultural distance. Yeah? Letter writing can also become a challenge. Uh, I give you uh, an uh, expression. Let's say you are managing a singer. In English, she will say, I will sing a song. But in Eastern Europe, yeah, after translation, I will implement a song. Well, kind of the same meaning, but it's not as direct as English language. Another barrier is perception, or a person's view of reality. Yeah, you can see this on a lot of advertising mistakes. Yeah? Countless advertising blunders yeah, happen when words are misinterpreted by others. Yeah? When pictures are misinterpreted by others. Yeah? And the challenge in perception is how others see us may be different than what we think we are. Yeah? Because we are all living in different realities, right? Okay, uh, I give you this uh, advertisement from Gap, if I'm not mistaken, from Gap. Okay, this is a nice picture. Yeah, uh, little children wearing uh, nice clothes. Yeah, what the sender wants to wants to let you know is all children can wear our products. But some receiver thinks that hmm, this shows discrimination. Which part of it is discrimination? Okay, I'll give you a few seconds to think. If you think that this shows some discrimination, this is right. Yeah? This shows a bigger yeah? uh, Caucasian European person leaning on a smaller yeah? African American child. Yeah? So, again, here is perception as a cultural barrier. Next is non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication is the transfer of meaning yeah, through means such as body language and use of physical space. Yeah. 
uh, non-verbal communication are a lot of things. Yeah, one of them is chromatics. This is the usage of color to communicate message. In some cultures, yeah, they do not encourage you to write your name in red. That is a type of chromatics. Chrome color. Yeah, kinesics is a study of communication through body movement and facial expression. Yeah, in terms of eye contact, posture, and also gesture. There, there is even a study on eye contact called OQ. Six. Also, proxemics, which is the way people use physical space to convey messages. Yeah? Intimate space are used for very confidential communication. Personal space, yeah? personal distance, yeah? they are used for talking with family or close friends. Social distance, they are used to handle most uh, business transactions, and public distance are used when calling a crossroom or giving a talk to a group. You can categorize, yeah, as a person, you can categorize which one in your network belong to your intimate space, which one of them belongs to your personal uh, space, your social space, and also your public space. But again, it depends on the culture as always. Yeah. Different countries have different perceptions of social distance, personal distance and also intimate distance. Okay. I like to focus on Argentina. Yeah. It is a Latin American country. If you notice, their social distance, uh, this is in CM, right? The social distance is so much less than Romania. Or maybe then, uh, maybe other, maybe high context uh, culture. Let's see. Maybe, yeah, maybe then it's much, much shorter than South Korea. Their personal distance is also very short, 60 cm. Yeah. Intimate distance, 30 cm. Maybe I think uh, this could be 40, yeah? 40 cm. Again, this is in general, it also depends on the personality of that person. Some people just like uh, to be close, distant to people. Some people just like to be away from other people. <laughs> Next is phonemics, the way time is used in a culture. We have discussed this last week. Yeah, there are two types, monochronic and poly. Yeah. The people in the monochronic culture, they do things in linear fashion. Usually, they are more instrumental. Usually, they are from the western uh, countries. Yeah. For chronic uh, cultures, they do several things at the same time. Remember uh, last week, yeah, uh, I give you a cartoon on... There are two types of cartoon, a western boss and a western person, a worker, you know, which belongs to monochronic uh, culture and polychronic culture, uh, a middle eastern boss and a middle eastern uh, worker. Yeah, polychronic culture, uh, people usually they like to weave, yeah, they like to mix in personal and professional uh, aspects in conversation. Monochronic uh, cultures, not so much. Next is Ocular 6, which is the study of eye contact. Yeah. Uh, this can be a lot of things in a lot of culture. Yeah. But I would like to give you uh, an example in Middle East society. Yeah. A lot of uh, countries in Middle East, they practice Islam. Yeah. In the Islamic faith, most Muslims lower their heads. They try not to focus on the opposite gender's features, except for the hands and face. On, this is on the basis of modesty. But Americans, they associate direct eye contact yeah, with trustworthiness. So this is how, you know, even your eye contact uh, can mean different things for different people. Next is how to achieve communication effectiveness. Yeah. As always, because we live in a 
our perception is different. Yeah, so we improve our feedback system. It is good if you go for a language training or maybe a cultural training. Language training is not enough. Yeah. And lastly is to practice flexibility and cooperation. We go to the next topic which is negotiation. Yeah, this is by far, I think, uh, one of the most important topics in cross-cultural management because you will need to negotiate with a lot of people, yeah? even with your lecturers uh, at uh, a very basic uh, level. At a higher level, you may want to negotiate with your boss if you want to ask for a pay raise and so on. So, negotiation is the process of bargaining with more with one more parties yeah, to arrive at a solution acceptable for all. Yeah. This is highly relevant for hiring, taxes and also creating joint ventures. There are two types of negotiation. One is distributive negotiation. This is when two parties with opposing goals, yeah, they compete over a value. Uh, in simpler words, it's a win-lose negotiation. For instance, if the sellers are competing for a buyer, somebody will win, somebody will lose. Next is integrative negotiation. This is when two groups, they integrate uh, interests, they create value and also they invest in agreement. Usually, this is a call a win-win scenario. Yeah, the agreement to start a new venture is a type of win-win scenario. Some differences in uh, the negotiation, distributive negotiation and integrative negotiation. The objective of uh, distributive negotiation is to create maximum, uh, to claim maximum value. Integrative negotiation is to create a value. Yeah? The motivation for distributive negotiation is win, because it's win-lose, yeah? only one will benefit. Integrative negotiation yeah, it's a group based benefit. The interest for a distributive negotiation is divergent. Yeah, divergent because it's one zero. For integrative negotiation, the interest is overlapping. Yeah, the relationship for distributive negotiation is short term. For integrative negotiation, is long term. The outcome of distributive negotiation is win lose. For integrative negotiation, it's win. From a cross-cultural perspective, yeah, how does negotiation negotiation styles are different? Yeah, because we have learned about cultural dimensions. Yeah, we also have learned about uh, the role of context in each culture, and also the differences in communication styles. Yeah, we can imagine how people from United States uh, behave during a negotiation, how people from Japan yeah, will behave in a negotiation, people from Arab countries, maybe from Mexican. You can read it on your own, but I will highlight uh, one of uh, one or two items. Yeah, In terms of group composition, yeah, for the US, it's uh, marketing-oriented, for Japanese, it's function-oriented, for Arabs, it's a community or specialist, but for Mexicans, it's friendship oriented. Yeah, for the number involved, they also differ. Again, it's not always uh, black and white. Yeah, it also depends on the organization. It also depends on the deal that they are negotiating. Yeah, uh, if you have your slides right now, I would like you to watch this uh, YouTube. A video it is on a negotiation between the US Army and Mexican Army yeah? okay. they are, the US Army is trying to renegotiate with the Mexican Army yeah? because their initial schedule did not consider a Mexican holiday yeah? for somebody uh, can be 
defenses, natural defenses, this can be an important meeting. So, the meeting is held at a Mexican restaurant. The people from the US, they arrive first. If you notice, they say Buenos Tardes, yeah? which means good, good afternoon or good evening in Spanish. Yeah? Next, you can see how they uh, greet each other. For the US, greeting Mexican uh, party is a handshake. Yeah? For a Mexican person, to a Mexican person, it's a hug. Consider the aspect of social and intimate distance that we have talked just now. Yeah. Next, in the uh, meeting, yeah, they were talking about boxing before formal meeting. Yeah. What does that have to do? Yeah. It is also important to have small talk. Yeah. Because, again, Mexicans are more uh, high context yeah, than Americans. Americans are much in lower context, so Americans have uh, to adapt to Mexicans' high context styles, yeah, which is to have slow but long, but also a uh, meaningful conversation. Boxing can sound uh, not so meaningful, but it can build rapport or uh, can be good uh, relationships. So here, they aim for a win-win negotiation yeah? and after that, yeah, the negotiation is a success. Uh, again, please have a look into the YouTube first yeah, before you, so that you have a sense on what we are talking here. Negotiation process, yeah? there are a few steps, starting with planning. Then interpersonal relationship building. Yeah, next is exchanging task related information. Yeah, information on the uh, let's see, it's business talk. Yeah. Next is persuasion. Next is the agreement. Planning. Yeah, this is uh, important to be neutral. For instance, if you want to have a meeting between a Japanese team and a German team. Yeah, it is better to do that meeting in Japan or Germany. Yeah, the concept of neutrality. Yeah, if you practice it, you will do. You will conduct that meeting somewhere else. Yeah, next is to develop a profile of counterparts and find out what they will uh, demand, what is their team composition, and what is their authority. Also, you will need a tactical preparation in terms of uh, it, it, the preparation to be able to counter the differences in culture, language and environment. Next is interpersonal relationship building. Yeah? You get to know the context and you start to build mutual trust. Remember the case of uh, the Mexican and American army just now? Yeah? Talking about boxing, actually, is them getting to know their their own uh, sense. Yeah? Usually, it is better if this is non-task sounding yeah? and you wait for others to start. Uh, at one point, you may want to use uh, an intermediary. Yeah? Somebody who is uh, in between those two cultures or those two groups. If you notice, the American uh, army, they brought with them their Mexican staff. Yeah, their Mexican worker, yeah, their Mexican staff is the intermediary. Next is the exchange task related information. Yeah, here, cultural differences will remain an issue. Yeah. Uh, there are several uh, items with regards to culture. Uh, we have talked about uh, how different cultures communicate. Yeah? Uh, but it is important for you to show understanding yeah, of the other viewpoint. Next is persuasion. Yeah? So be aware of false information. Also ambiguous authority. Take note of non-verbal messages. Yeah? And the fact that uh, cultures uh, from individualist societies and collectivist societies 
may understand things differently. Yeah, uh, it would, uh, people from individual uh, countries may likely to want to have uh, the deal signed immediately, but people from the collective countries, they may have to, they may want to go through their boss, they may want to go through some bureaucracy, yeah, it depends. Yeah. Next is agreement. Yeah. It, uh, usually starting with extremes may be most effective, and also uh, contracts are important. Some differences affecting negotiation when negotiating, do not identify by the uh, the counterpart in culture too quickly. Yeah. Common cues such as accent may be unreliable. Uh, as you know now, a lot of people are getting uh, very good with their English, uh, so much that uh, they are you almost cannot see their home culture, but their home culture is still strong. Yeah? Also, be aware of the Western bias of doing. You know, the ways of being, feeling, thinking, and talking can shape relationships <coughs> more powerfully yeah, than doing. Next is to counteract the tendency to formulate simple, consistent, stable image. Yeah, do not assume that all aspects of culture are equally significant. Yeah, and do not rec uh, do recognize that norms for interaction involving outsiders may differ from those for interactions between compatriots. Compatriots here meaning the people from your home culture. Next is do not overestimate familiarity with uh, the other person's culture. For instance, if you have been, uh, if you are a Malaysian person and you have been living, uh, let's say, in Sri Lanka for ten years, there still might be uh, aspects of that culture that you are not aware of. Next is negotiation tactics. Where should the negotiation take place? Usually, it uh, should be neutral. At best, it should be neutral. In terms of time limits, also consider the other party's travel schedule. This is especially within the context of international negotiation. Yeah? But also consider buyer-seller relationship. In some negotiation process, yeah, one, some Groups or some people they like to uh, po provide favors, yeah, uh, give a lot of food, uh, eat at one point maybe money. So does favor consider a bribe or not? Yeah, for some cultures favors are not considered as a bribe, but in some culture favors are considered as a bribe. So it depends. Next is bargaining behaviors. Yeah, you use a lot of extreme behaviors. Yeah, uh, sometimes you want to use promises and also threats. Uh, a type of uh, an example of promise behavior is if this team is signed, both our companies will generate seventy percent increase in sales. So this is a promise. You can also uh, threat. Yeah, if you do not sign this deal, the com company from Vietnam. Is already interested, so that will uh, maybe influence the other party a bit. Yeah. Also, next, uh, please consider non-verbal behaviors of the other party. And how to negotiate for mutual benefit? You separate people from the problem. Always focus on the interests rather than the positions of the people. You provide options yeah, and using objective criteria. Always be grounded within your principles. And you go back to the case of Bangladesh and also H&M. Yeah. H&M and the consortium of uh, European uh, clothing producers, they can easily surrender to Americans' linear styles. But they do not, yeah. So because they stick to their principles, the agreement actually happened. Okay, so we have come to the end of our discussion. So today we have uh, discussed about 
communication, the expects shaping intercultural communication, and also how it influence negotiation. Yeah, these are some uh, questions that you can try at home. Uh, if you would like, yeah. Till then, uh, do let me know. Yeah, if uh, this is enough or this is okay uh, in terms of uh, in terms of lectures go uh, as always you at this point of time for online learning your discipline and also your independence are important and you also know that you can always reach out to me if you have any questions yeah if there are things that you uh, are, do not understand yeah. Uh, do let me know also if uh, this type of uh, communication is good yeah, through YouTube or if not, maybe we can think about uh, some other ways of uh, online learning. Maybe some something more interactive. Yeah, maybe through Google Hangout or maybe Facebook Live. I don't know. Please uh, let me know. Yeah, or maybe let your uh, class rep know, Amirul and uh, Afan. Okay, uh, if you are at home now, yeah, please uh, stay safe. Yeah, for international students, maybe you are on your way uh, to your home country. Maybe you are still in UKM. Yeah, but uh, please take care of your movements. Yeah, it is quite an again, it's quite an uncomfortable time, but uh, we, yeah, I, will, I will update you from time to time. Yeah. Again, if you have uh, your your assignments, will still go on as usual. Yeah, I will let you know uh, more information uh, soon. Yeah, through UKM for you. Okay, till then, I will see you soon. All right.